to Bible school. Some of them are graduates, but <clears throat> they have uh, come here um, not to get educated, but to know Jesus, to have him formed in them. And um, it goes all the way back to the first generation when we officially started anyway. Uh, Mallory and Kelly were graduates from that first class. And um, I, I couldn't be prouder of them in that they have lost their lives that Christ may live. And they live it every day and they have a deep, deep desire to live it, to have him live more. It is not that they or, or myself, any of us, have reached that plateau where we don't want more of Jesus. And, and I'm very blessed by the skits that have been put on by them, I see the Lord, I sense the Lord, I sense in them more than just actors. And in the church, there are many actors, you know, that act a certain way, but they're not really gone. The cross has not taken them away that Christ may live, that Christ by his nature, like at the last when, when Jason was hung up there and he didn't represent Jesus 2,000 years ago. He represented Jesus right now. <laughs> the life, the life of the Lamb still laying down as others for those who mistreat or misuse or abuse. or And um, that... It really leads along into the things that the Lord's been sharing me, with me, and I believe that is more than a sharing. I believe that that arise thing that was happening, that there's the need for us to arise uh, on another level, on another level. And... Um, uh, I, I have um, cut short several times, not just in this gathering, um, my sharing of this because of other things came up. And so I'm going to attempt to give you a shorter version. But we've been talking about John the Baptist and the reality that before John came, there was 400 years of nothing, no, no visible or, or scriptural thing written of him between the Testaments. And the last book to be written was Malachi, and I won't have time to, to go there, but this is where John the Baptist came from, and it was the issues in Malachi that God saw again before Jesus was manifested to the world. And so he sent John, and that's what we talked about in the other session we talked about, and I'd shared it with our body that much, but I'm about to get into part that I haven't gotten into we saw him come and we saw what a refreshing that this man had been called of God and was the first quote unquote prophet and yet he wasn't a prophet in, a, in that sense. He was declaring that the Lord is wants to come, wants to be manifested and we are supposed to make a straight path to him. A straight path and that those same issues are today and we've let other things get in the way and we've let things we've gotten just enough that we feel confident and we need to feel not so confident we need to feel needy 
of Jesus. We need to feel desiring something more, something more, something more, always, always more, more of Jesus, always more of Jesus. And so we left off in uh, John 1, if you'll turn there with me, Gospel of John, chapter 1. And John appears, and everyone knows that something is going on compared to what was before. Everyone knows that there's, this is something to do with God, and that this man is not speaking of himself, and that this man has someone in view that is greater than him, and that he is imminent he is he's already there but they don't know him they haven't seen him they haven't fully understood that and so John is saying what we're about to read in these verses verse 23 and 27 and that's where we left off last time and he said I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord as said in the prophet Isaiah, he it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latchet I am not worthy to, to unloose. And the thing that caught my eye when I got to this place and what the Lord was sharing with me was that phrase, I am the voice of one. And, okay, so we, we have, over the years, way, way, way back, almost, you know, in my 20s, early 20s, when I was in Bible school, we talked about the voice of one and being the voice of one and not preaching all this other stuff, the voice of one. Do you agree with that? Amen. But this time, the Holy Spirit drew my attention to the words, I am the voice. I am the voice. And I realized when I thought about us, I realized that we've made it about being the voice more than being the one. Now, this isn't condemnation, but it, it's the Lord. The Lord wants to bring us more into his heart. And that's why we gathered, amen? We want to gather to his heart. We don't want to gather to new lessons so that we can be a louder voice or a better voice, amen? So it's not a rebuke, but it is from the Lord. <clears throat> I am the voice. And he, we make it about us and, and, and being the voice. I want to be the, I want, this is what I want to be, is I want to be one that, is the voice of that one. And John is that voice in this situation right here. And if you just took this situation and John speaking, he would speak to us. And when we ask him who he is, he would say he's the voice of one. But if you asked him what he is saying, he's not saying become the voice. Do y'all see that? He's not saying become the voice of this one. He's saying make straight paths to this one. Go after him and clear everything out of your way. And this will become even more clear as we get <clears throat> into the scriptures here. Because it's actually a powerful truth that, that, that is about to be presented to us by the word of God and by the Lord. <clears throat> He's saying make straight paths so that he can come forth, so that we can see him, so that it can be him, not just us talking about him. Amen? John says, I am the voice crying to you. 
He didn't say, I am the voice making you voices, but crying to you that you start making those paths to him so that he is the one who is seen. John, you know, being the voice, if we, if we fall into this, we will fall into doing it wrong because we will make our ministry being the voice instead of being the vessel. Think about it. Think about it. But the word will say it here shortly. And sometimes we make we have that desire to become the voice of the one that we fail to make straight paths to his heart ourselves. We make straight paths to the message. Come on. And we learn it. We learn the we learn the terminology. We learn the way that it's shared. We, we learn those things. And pretty soon we can be a pretty good voice. Nobody would deny that. You, you say it so well, they might say. You become a good voice for it. But that's not, that's not what John was preaching. He said, make straight paths to him. And the truth is, that you may be a good voice. You may be a good voice, but your being is not worthy. It's supposed to be Christ. You see what I mean? And it's not, again, it's not about being unworthy. It's about He is so worthy that I take that position because I want the worthy one. And not to think that anywhere along the line I'm the worthy one, whether it's whether it's uh, my measure of spirituality or my measure of being the voice. Well, I must be really spiritual because I can say these things with clarity. You realize this. I know you surely do. That clarity of the message doesn't change anyone. We think that if we make it more clear that you'll get it. And it's not true. Jimmy shared that. You didn't know we were going to have a whole bunch of blind people up here, did you? (laughs) But we place too much emphasis on becoming the voice. You know, I don't know how to re-say this, but it's like instead of listening to John and going after the Lord, we listen to John and want to be like John. The Baptist, we want to be the voice instead of letting his words move us toward Jesus. So in verse uh, 29, still in John. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. So all of a sudden, all this time before Jesus shows up, all of this time he's been talking, he's been the voice, he's been talking, Jesus is first, Jesus is before me, or Jesus is all, or Jesus is, you see what I'm saying? He's, you know, he's... Yes, he's preferred before me. But all of a sudden, Jesus shows up, and it, the scriptures never call him Jesus. John never calls him Jesus. He calls him the Lamb of God. Then call him Jesus. And when he sees the Lamb, he says, This is the one that's preferred before me. That's the one. Not Jesus of Nazareth. Not the Jesus that we think is, is you know, like, like Jesus is sitting on a throne with sandals and a robe and, you know. But there's a lamb, slain lamb on that throne. And he describes that lamb in terms of death. 
Because all Israel knew you didn't take away sin by just praying. <laughs> a lamb had to die. There's the slain lamb. This is the one that's preferred before me. This is the one of whom I speak. This is the one that I am not worthy. Do you see that? I mean, it's, it's hitting him. But it's not hitting him strong enough, just like it's probably not hitting us strong enough yet. Because we don't realize what God's about to do. And I, notice I said, it's not even hitting John strong enough. We, we have to take this journey in the scriptures to see this. Behold the Lamb. The Lamb is preferred. To God, the Lamb, the slaughtered Lamb, is preferred before all of us. I appreciated the skit again as it is setting forth Jesus as the scapegoat. And I don't want to be the scapegoat. And I don't want to, you know, I just want to be happy and I want to read my Bible and I want to be blind and everything. But to see the beautiful one, the slaughtered beautiful one. Oh, he has no beauty that we would desire him based on our eyes and our preferences. But this is the one that is preferred before us. This is God's preference. Always the Father's preference. The Father says of, of the slaughtered lamb, this is my beloved son. This is him. John says, here's the one. This is the one I've been talking about that is coming. Verse 30. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Is John the Baptist preparing us? That's the question for that day, and it's that question for this day. Is he preparing us properly? And I would say the preparation could be there if we listen to his words and look for the right one instead of forget the one he's talking about and try to become the voice of that one. Still glad I'm preaching tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so what we're going to find out is that the voice has to give way to the lamb. Yep, it's got to happen. And the preparations are in the works right now for giving, getting away and giving away, giving way to the Lamb, giving, making straight paths to the Lamb. So verse 35 says again, the next day, the next day after, John stood and two of his disciples, okay? So here's, here's John and here's his disciples, okay? And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Who did John say this to? His own disciples. May I say it like this? Disciples of the voice. They're not disciples of Jesus. They're disciples of the voice. And they are learning what? They're not, they didn't come to John, I don't believe this, I don't believe they came to John to hang out with him in straight, making straight paths for the Lamb. I think they came to him to be his disciple, be the disciple of the voice so they could become the voice of their generation. Verse, uh, we're going to start the transition right here. Verse 35. Again, the next day after John stood and the two disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And here it comes, verse 37. 
And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed the Lamb. Again, again, it hasn't said the name of Jesus, maybe in your Bible, but in our Bible, it has not mentioned the name of Jesus yet. It's only referred to him as the Lamb. And the only words that they have heard with their ear is, Behold the Lamb. And so, John again, this time he points out the Lamb. And these two disciples hear John speak. And what do they do? They follow the Lamb. They choose the Lamb ministry. Can I say it like that for teaching purposes? They choose the Lamb ministry over the voice ministry. We need to follow the life of this one. He didn't say this was a great minister. He didn't say he's got a great ministry. He said he's a lamb. And the other time, just a few verses up, he's a slaughtered lamb. Follow this one. Follow this one. This one is preferred by God than my ministry, John would say. So the voice begins to lose ministry as being the voice. As seen by the first two disciples of John. They walk off and now they're no longer voice ministry. They're lamb ministry. They're going after the lamb himself. John could say, wait a minute, if I preach this, I'm going to lose people. You know? Some people might, might go after that, you know, and that's going to hurt my ministry. Yeah, that's right. Later on, he's going to say, and we'll probably close with that, but John said it, he must increase and I must decrease. You remember that? The voice must decrease and the lamb must increase. So let's go to chapter 3 now. Uh, John chapter 3. And verse um, 23. And at this point in time, this has been after what happened we've read before. At this point in time, John is still doing the voice ministry. Okay? He's still doing the voice ministry. All right, so verse 23, and John also was baptizing in Anon near Salim because there was much water there and they came and were baptized for John was not yet cast into prison. Now, it's important to, for you to hear that at this juncture, though it hasn't happened, it mentions John going to prison. This is important. This is no mild thing. Okay. Verse 23, let's see. Uh, verse 25. Then there arose a question between of some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. Okay, at first it sounds like some, some Jews are arguing with John's disciples and, you know, they're pointing out problems. But ultimately, we're going to read, and probably not right this minute, ultimately what we're going to read is John's responses to his own disciples. For he will say something like this, I told you <laughs> what I'm about. Okay, so um, in verse 26, And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, 
This is John the Baptist. Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. What's going on here? What is going on here? We need to understand exactly what's going on here, not just the event. We need to understand that God is going to start putting limitations on the voice ministry. He already started with it. Two went away into the lamb ministry. Amen? And now his disciples are going, well, it looks to me like all men are going to him. And at this point, John's doing pretty good. He's hanging in there with, well, I told you, you know, he's preferred before me, right? But God allows, and this is really important, God allows the voice ministry to become limited. He does. It limits his followers. It limits him by putting him in prison. Everything's going to start decreasing. And it's not just because a man said, well, he must increase and I must decrease. And so the cross helps me to decrease and he increases. It's talking about the voice ministry that just is talking about him and pointing at him, but no life formed in them yet. No lamb ministry going on. Why, why do the limitations start? Because the voice ministry is no longer good enough for God. It's great that we can talk about it. But God wants his son in us. He wants the lamb formed in us. This is his goal. He didn't, he, John didn't come to point to Jesus so he could make preachers. <laughs> I preach the right message. Well, go over there with John. But I talk about the lamb. Behold the lamb. You hear it. I, I'm pointing out the right one. You're still talking about him and they're not one with him. So let's go to Matthew chapter 11 now. We'll talk about that prison aspect. Matthew chapter 11. We'll just read verse uh, 2 and 3. Now when John had heard in the prison that the works of Je of the works of Jesus he sent two of his disciples and said unto him art thou he that should come or do we look for another wow wow this is the faithful John the Baptist this is the messenger spoken of in Malachi that he would come this is the only one that seemed to be in tune with what's going on with this new change that's happening. And he's pointing to the right person. And now he's in prison. You talk about limitations? That's, that's way more limited than losing two disciples and he he should have been careful sending two disciples out to ask this question because you know he's losing them quick and he sent two of his disciples and said unto him art thou he that should come or do we look for another let me tell you john pointed to the Lamb. He pointed to Jesus. He pointed to the Lamb of God. He was the voice of that one. He did all of that. He, everything was lined up. Everything was correct. But since he didn't follow his own advice, now he is, his ministry, him, he is now in prison. And since the lamb life wasn't formed in him, 
time goes by and then he begins to waver about even the, the, the right one. What do you think of that? Because it's, God said, that's enough. I, I, it's not about just knowing the right one and pointing to him. It's not about preaching the right one. It's not about voicing it. It is your responsibility. It is my desire, the Lord would say, that you listen to John and start making straight paths to the Lamb. To be formed in you. To be living. A living Jesus. A living Lamb that is crucified. That gives Himself in these ways and in these manners. So he wavers. Are you the one? I mean, what do you think the, the disciples of John must have thought? I mean, don't you think if they were with him early on, that they must have thought, what are we doing? Why is he sending us to ask? He spent all of these years saying, there's the one. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the slain one. Doesn't he remember that those first two disciples, when they really heard it, they said, I'm sorry, John. I'm changing ministries. <laughs> I'm going after this. I, I'm not going to stick with you and get the message from you and then spread out the preaching, you know, group. We're, we're going to do what you're saying, not what you're doing, you know. So now he's in bondage. Now he's in bondage. Okay, so I'm, this isn't meant to scare you. <laughs> But there is this reality that you start, start seeing that once John has done this for a while and his own disciples are going after the Lamb and he isn't, and he's still holding on to that ministry, um, that it starts decreasing. It starts again, again, with the, the two that left and then, you know, all uh, the disciples are coming to John and going, look, it looks like everybody's going after him. And then finally, nobody can come to John because he's in prison, if you will. Limitation upon limitation upon limitation. Well, you know, where are all the people? You know, John can start thinking that. He can start going through all these doubts, you know. Where are all the people? Where's all the great ministry? Where's the blessing of God? Well, the devil attacked. No, this isn't an attack of the devil. This is God saying... I want you to leave that ministry. Do the first part. Do the first works. You ever heard that before in the book of Revelation? Do the first works. You know, go do what I sent John to tell you to do. Leave John, say thank you very much, and go after the lamb and get the lamb formed in you. Make straight paths. Get all the junk out of the way and say, I want him. I don't care what I have to do. I don't care how far or how much or whatever does not. I don't care. I want the real thing. Well, here, read this book. I don't want to read another book. We'll say, Randy, you're, you're hurting your book sales. <laughs> I don't care. I, you know, you ask anybody around here. I'm not, I'm not promoting the books. Ask the, the, the person responsible for all that. They have to hunt me down and beg me to put a price on something or whatever, and I'm just going, you know, and somebody went back there and asked a price on something, and I happened to be standing there, and I said, hey. <laughs> you know, I forget. It was something like, it's $2, and it was like 20 bucks or something. But Because <laughs> I know, I know the books can be beneficial. I know the, the teaching, I know coming here and all that, it can be beneficial. But only if it drives you to him. 
you know, you didn't, you know, you did not come here just to hear me preach. You came here for the heart of the Lord. And we've been getting that. But we need to get our priorities straight. We need to get our priorities straight. We, and, if we're, and if things are starting to crumble a little bit or whatever, it's time to leave the voice ministry. It's time to go after the Lamb. I want your life. I want who you are. I don't want to learn about you. I don't want to sit on a seaside with John and John say, well, here's what he's like. You know? I don't want to hear your stories anymore. I love you, John. But I'm out of here. <laughs> you go after the Lord with all your heart. You, 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 you know, John kept saying, you know, repent. Well, he wasn't saying, repent of your sins so that you can, I mean, he wasn't. He's not saying repent of your regular sins. Um, he's saying what came out of Malachi. He's saying, repent, you have left the Lord, return unto me. Besides, John couldn't bring about a repentance that would forgive sins. That only happened on the cross with the blood of Jesus. That's where it gets forgiven. You say, well, I'm clean now. No, you're supposed to be on a path that you're clearing everything to get to Jesus. That's repenting from, but, I, I'm, but I'm going after the Lord. <laughs> okay. I, I don't even want to talk to you then. <laughs> If, if the Lord's not moving your heart, then what can I say? I don't want to talk you into something, you know. <clears throat> That's funny. Uh, let's go to Matthew 3, verse 1 and 2. I do have a reference here to John preaching uh, repentance. Matthew 3, verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. So, so you, you do notice that he came preaching. I mean, he's the voice. <laughs> so he's going to preach about him. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, I love you all, but everybody in here is not clean. But I'm not talking about rank sin. I'm talking about not heeding the warning of John the Baptist who has been saying to us, not repent so that I will be forgiven of our sins. Yes, John. But yes, John, I want to make straight paths to him. I want us to recognize. This is John talking. I want us to recognize that that uh, we are not worthy, not because we're unworthy, but we are not worthy because he is so much more that we can't even measure, you know. And he is, get all this stuff really in our psyche, in our being. He is preferred before me. The slaughtered lamb is what we're supposed to be following. I, I like what you shared during the, it was, it was more than a snack. <laughs> felt, I felt like I was eating a big old turkey leg while she was sharing. <laughs> but, you know, that spirit of realizing that, that his heart is what it's all about. And if you have to preach, it'll come out of life bubbling up. And look out, Houston. But that's life, and it's going to be about him, yes, but it's not the same as John the Baptist because our goal is not to learn the message or learn to preach the message. Our Bible school is not to do that. That's, you know, that's like when you were pushing the broom, you know, and sweeping, he's, you know, 
I was leaning back there where where uh, David Dave is, and um, all of a sudden somebody was coming behind me and pushing a broom, and I looked back, and it was one of our guests, and uh, and I said, "What are you doing?" You know, and he said. Well, I'm giving back from all that I'm receiving of the Lord. And I thought, my God, yes. A living response. You say, well, that's too lowly. No, that's Jesus. That's a living response. And a beautiful response. You know. And I started to say, take that broom away from you. <laughs> But then I realized that's Jesus. That's the Lord. That's the life of the Lord. That's, you can't stop it. It's, it gives. It loves. It goes the second mile and then probably goes a bunch more after that. Jesus didn't want to freak us out by saying it was more than an extra mile. You know? <laughs> you know? Now go, go 20 miles and there will be a cross at the end of it. Crawl up on him. <laughs> <clears throat> so repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand John, John is two things he's given us a warning John is a warning to us his life and his ending is a warning and Jesus talks about it so I don't, want to, I don't want to go into all that but you know Jesus talks about it well in this realm John's the greatest but in our realm no once the kingdom comes the government of the Lamb of God sitting on the throne and governing inside of us, sitting on the throne of our heart. John, John couldn't touch that. Amen? Think of it. If you know the scriptures, it's like, whoa! You realize that that's the truth. So John is a warning, and he's given us a warning. And he's saying repent, and he's saying repent because of Malachi, because of the things that were going on there. And again, this was all in my sharing, but it, it just we got cut short, and that's, that was to the glory of God. But in, in Malachi, where it's a pleading from the Lord, like, you missed me, Israel. You totally shot the wrong direction. Return to me. He didn't say, repent of your sins and do right. Shame, shame. No, no, no. He didn't say that. He said, return to me. That's the cry of his heart. But to return to him means make straight paths. Remember, that's where John the Baptist came from, was the settings in Malachi, and then it says, you know, but I will send my messenger, you know. He's, gonna, he's going, you know, I'm not going to have this forever. I'm going to send my messenger, and he's going to start pointing out the right one, and you're going to make straight paths to me, and you're going to return unto me. So back to John 1. I figure all this scripture jumping is good for you. Helps you helps you find the different scriptures. John chapter one, Gospel of John. Verse forty, starting with verse forty. One of the two this is when, when John said, Behold the Lamb of God. You remember that? One of the two which heard John speak and followed him, followed him who? Followed the Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God. John didn't even say follow him. Did you know that? John didn't say, behold the Lamb of God. Guys, follow him. He probably went, hey, where are y'all going? My ministry is dwindling. One of the two which heard John speak and followed the lamb was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Did you know that? He first findeth his brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, the lamb, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, the lamb. 
Am I correct in, in putting that in there? Because the verse just before this, all John said was, Behold the Lamb, in verse 39. And they, then verse 40 is, and one of them was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, and he goes and finds his brother and says, We found him. This is the one that God's always been prophesying through all the prophets, the Lamb of God. <laughs> and we're supposed to follow him. Andrew was doing better than John the Baptist. And we know that Peter and Andrew became of the twelve. All right, now chapter 3 again, and I, I'm almost ready to wrap this up because they, they're just, this is the best way. John chapter 3. And John answered and said, this, okay, so this is uh, when the, when the Jews were talking to John's disciples. Um, and then John's disciples came to John and said, hey, you know, it looks like everybody is going after Jesus' ministry instead of yours. And... This is his answer. And John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Well, we know that heaven doesn't have hands and arms and says, Oh, here, I'll drop this down to you. It comes from the Lord. And, and if it comes, you know, the scriptures say in James, uh, uh, Every good and perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of lights. Okay, so everything comes from the Father. Well, guess what the Father gives? He gives His Son. You say, well, He gave me His Son when I got born again. He's still wanting to fill you with the fullness of Him that is, was, and is, and is to come, while you're just was. You know, he's was and is and is to come, and you're was. <laughs> yeah, good. I heard a thank you, Lord, there. <laughs> because he's filling us with all the fullness of God, and it is the life of Christ, and it's not about us, and we know all those words, and it's all wonderful, but it can't be. It's not about us, and thank God Everything that we preach in this place is not about us. The voice ministry, that's all it is, or all it could be. And that's why I was commenting on the skits, because their hearts that put those on, their hearts, um, and as a group, I know they do a lot of things where they have input from one another, was to give a demonstration of, the living Christ in crisis. What's he like in us? What's he really like in us? See, that's the, that's the issue. That's the difference between John's ministry and, and the ministry that he want, the Father wants us to have. So in John chapter 3, he, he said... Uh, Verse 27 again, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, and that I am sent before him. So here, there is the, the second phase, if you will, of the diminishing, the limitation of the voice ministry where the people are starting to go over to Jesus now and they're following the Lamb instead of John's particular type of ministry. 
And John says you, to his own disciples, look, guys, did you never get what I'm about? Um, you yourselves bear me witness that I said I'm not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. So he is making a beautiful stand for the Lord outside of him. Do you understand that wording? The Lord outside of him. The Lord over there instead of the Lord within him. It's a beautiful stand. It's one of the best that you could hear on the planet at that time. If you want to hear a good message, go to John the Baptist. You yourselves know I'm not the Christ. I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly of the bridegroom's voice. Of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. Okay, so there is some grasp of, of uh, limitation and of decrease in reference to the voice ministry. He sort of understands that, and he's telling his disciples, look, you know, if you're my disciples, we understand this. That as long as we just preach this and don't live it, there's going to be limitations. He's got to increase. That's the way the Father's heart is. Can I get amen on that? <laughs> he's got to. It's, it's going to happen. He, John just didn't know he's going to have his head cut off. Can I get a praise God? <laughs> no, not for John, you. <laughs> so he starts talking about being the friend of the bridegroom. It sounds beautiful. But folks, we're supposed to be joined to him. Uh, the, one of the definitions in the very end of the book of Revelation is, is what? Called the... Wife of the Lamb. The wife of the Lamb. Thank y'all. The wife of the Lamb, which means one. Which means I care about your mind. I care about your life. I want, I want your fullness to flow through me. I want us to move as one, to think as one, to breathe as one, to, to um, uh, glorify the Father as one. I want to be so transparent that when they look into the new Jerusalem, which was termed the wife of the lamb, it's transparent and I see the lamb, the slain lamb on a throne in her. And I don't see her. That's beautiful. But if you want to be seen, and especially if you want to be heard, do you want to be heard? You know, do you know, I, this is something I believe, though. I don't believe there's any power in the preaching of Christ and Him crucified just by preaching it. I don't. Sorry, but I don't. But I believe there is power when it's backed up by the Holy Spirit and the life of Christ within us, the slain lamb within us, then I believe that you're getting more than words and more than clarity of words. Let me just ask you this. I know we're getting close to having to stop here. So just when we get ready, come up a few minutes before and stand right here. <laughs> and then put your hand. And, and uh, I'll stop. And I'll show everyone else that I can handle it too. You can do it to me. I don't care. God. <laughs> if you want me to stop right now, I will. Do you want me to stop right now? Okay, raise your hand if you want me to stop. <laughs> you, John was asked in the book of Revelation this was not John the Baptist have you seen the wife of the lamb and John one of the twelve who walked with Jesus for three and a half years who had been caught up into heaven says no, I haven't seen her. 
He's going, dude, you got to see this. You know that word, dude? <laughs> you go, hey, dude. <laughs> well, the angel said to John, hey, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, my translation yeah the uh, first her her heresy translation <laughs> and he said no I haven't seen her and he takes it up on a high hill and it shows her him new Jerusalem and that's the that's the wife of the Lamb, represented by a city in which the Lamb is enthroned in the middle, in the midst of her. And life is flowing out of him, out of that throne, flowing out of her, right? Right? but it's not coming from her. But she is one with him. And she knows she's not sitting there going, look at all the healing I'm doing. I got a healing ministry. Because, you know, the waters went out and healed the nations, you know. And she could sit there and go, yeah, look, it's all coming out of me. It's my ministry. No, her ministry was to house him, to have to be a house, a habitation, a place of dwelling for the Lamb, and not just to let Him be in there somewhere, but to enthrone Him. You don't hear in the book of Revelation the wife of the Lamb walking around going, hey, have you heard about the Lamb of God? You, you don't hear her preaching. In fact, what you see is, at the very end, you see her coming down. Everybody wants to go up. <laughs> she's, she's wanting to come down like he did. Come down, lay down her life, and manifest the one that's inside of her. <laughs> she's beautiful. She's glorious. Having the glory of God. Not her glory. It's not her glory, and she knows it. She's just happy to be one with him and have whatever his life does on the inside of her, if it's rivers or hiccups, she doesn't care. She just wants him. And I love this. He does say the right thing about being, I mean, he says the nice thing about being a friend of the bridegroom, but he doesn't say, I'm part of the bride. But I wonder if this sentence here maybe should have been divided a little differently because it says, and rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. So he's rejoicing at the voice of the bridegroom, but he's just being the friend. But listen to this. It sounds like this my joy therefore is fulfilled because it ends with a period there is referring to him being a friend but what if this my joy therefore is fulfilled, he must increase and I must decrease? I mean, doesn't that sound really more according to nature? Uh, and, I, and I'm not arguing with the Word of God, and I don't know anything, so forget what I said. <laughs> but John explains his ministry in terms of decrease. He must increase and I must decrease. And... He's doing that to his own disciples. And he sounds like he's doing, he's been doing it again and again and again. You know, the voice, the ministry, the, the, the ministry, the voice ministry must decrease. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we could say that within ourselves? You know, I've pushed and worked to become the voice ministry, the voice of one Oh, it's only about Jesus. Well, where is he in you? Don't talk about that. It's just him. 
Remember that, that the scriptures that were put up there and it was a song that we sang and it's like we build our paneled houses. You're going to get a lot of paneling thrown out before this, you know. We're going to have on the street out there, we'll have piles of paneling <laughs> built with timber. Amen. And all the, you know, and you waste your time and your money and your money's going, you try to do this and you try to do that. Limitation, isn't it? Limitation, limitation. He says, go up to the reality that is him and bring it down and build it into the earth. As in earth as it is in heaven. He didn't say, wait till you go to heaven and everything will be wonderful. He didn't say that not go there it's the kingdom the government of his nature the government the kingdom the government of his nature coming in earth not on earth he didn't say on earth he said in and in our earth and wouldn't it be wonderful if we we just said hey you know what I must decrease and he must increase. And we understood that to mean I must decrease as the voice ministry. In other words, just trying to learn the thing to be able to say it right and to, you know, and it does bless people, but it doesn't bless the Father because the Lamb is preferred before that ministry. I mean, isn't that clear? Have we, have we covered that? The lamb is preferred for it. And we just say in our hearts, I don't want to go this way. I don't want to hang with John the Baptist. I don't want to, um, um, you know, do the, one of the best ministries on the earth. I want the lamb formed in me. I want that to increase. I want him to increase. This my joy is fulfilled. This would fulfill my joy. If I quit worrying about figuring out the scriptures and seeing great things, I just want his heart, the Father's heart. If you want the Father's heart, he, in his heart, he wants his son. He wants the land. Should we pray? Amen. Let's pray. If you want to come up to the altars, you're welcome to do so, but we will pray anyway. Father, we don't hear your word as rebuke or as if you are against us. We hear it the way it was originally intended. We hear that John declared you. But we want to leave that declaration from the way that we used to see it and hold it. We want to leave that becoming the voice because he never said become the voice. He never said that. He said make straight paths to the Lamb. And Father, we have, we put way too much importance on that. And we've almost made it our identity. But you've granted last year where we would gather at your feet and it wouldn't be about anything of our ministry. And you've moved in such a manner this year that it would be about your heart and you're making your heart known that it's not a whole bunch of things or it's not, it's not special things or being in a certain place. It is wanting to give you your son. And he is in us. And if we would decrease, he'll come forth. If, uh, 
The truth is, if he increases, we will decrease. But Father, we must understand what the scriptures are trying to tell us and not pursue just being one who can declare him, but to pursue him in us as Lamb of God, slaughtered Lamb. Father, thank you. Thank you that you love us and that you reach out to us and that you want to touch us and that you want to bring our, you hear our heart cry. You know, you know that we do want you, but it's not always, it's not always clear to us. Our focus is not always just right. But you've heard from many, even today, the same message declaring the same one and saying, don't learn these messages. Go after the Lamb. Follow the Lamb. Father, in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, there are, in, in chapter 5, there are those who are around the throne and it's a number that cannot be numbered and they're saying, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. And they're not talking about their salvation. They're talking about the beauty of his nature. But Father, that number decreases in a major way in chapter 14, where there are those who follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. And it becomes their, their focus is him and him alone. Whatever he says, whatever he does, whatever he feels, whatever that those things are the only thing that matter but father even that has to give way and in the book of revelation there's only one left and that's the bride that's the wife of the lamb but it's not one it's many who have that same heart male or female that have been joined of one heart for jesus in oneness with him father may we lay down our May we lay down our fancy sermons. May we lay down our, our, our great revelations. Because, Father, I just see that John never followed you. He never followed you. He kept preaching it till the end until it got so dark. He wasn't even sure if you were it, Jesus. So, Father, we reach our, the arms of our hearts, the hands of our hearts toward the Lamb now. And we say we do love you. We wouldn't have preached you if we didn't love you. But we don't want it to be about preaching you, even though that will come. Our rivers will flow just like the bride and the wife of the Lamb in the book of Revelation. Lord, there are the rivers that flow out of the Lamb which come out of her. They will still flow, but her emphasis is to be a house, a, a city that houses the slaughtered Lamb and enthrones Him in the center where He becomes the light, where He becomes the temple where he becomes all of that. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word and thank you for hungry hearts that desire you. Thank you, Lord.